Hello, welcome to this uh, sermon and prayer video for November 12th, the 24th Sunday after Pentecost. I'm Pastor Sean Neider, Zion Lutheran Church in Grand Coulee, Washington, and Bethel Lutheran Church in Coulee City. Our readings today, Amos 5, 18 to 24, the day of the Lord, 1st Thess Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18, also um, the resurrection, you know, uh, the last day, and uh, Matthew 25, 1 through 13, the parable of the wise virgins, which is why we'll sing the children's hymn, Give Me Oil in My Lamp. We'll also sing, Rise My Soul to Watch and Pray, uh, wake, wake, Awake, for Night is Flying, and Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray the call out prayer for this week. Lord God, Heavenly Father, send forth your Son to lead home your bride, the Church, that with all the company of the redeemed we may finally enter into his eternal wedding feast. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As we mentioned during the sermon last week, All Saints Day, Sunday, All Saints Sunday, and, uh, and as hopefully you read the readings and you noticed they were all focused on the last day, even the Thessalonians that we've been reading through this time, this last few weeks. Um, yeah, although we've had Reformation Day and All Saints Day, so we've skipped most of Thessalonians. But uh, looking forward to the end times. And our Gospel is, in the, is still in those chapters during Holy Week of Jesus' teaching uh, uh, between Palm Sunday and Good Friday. And uh, chapter 25 that they're reading for the next couple of weeks is the last chapter before the Last Supper, Monday, Thursday, and, and, and the last Passover. The Passover. Now, uh, people usually have two reactions to the end times, and Christians can be similar. Either uh, uh, many, especially unbelievers, um, with the example of the current apocalyptic nature of much of the 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 uh, the unbelieving, the the secularness, the uh, the the, uh, and I'll, I'm going to blame the climate crisis extremists, they fear the end. Uh, they are so afraid of the end. And I'm not saying that Christians shouldn't care about the climate uh, or the end to some extent, but, the, uh, but uh, God does not want us to destroy the earth by pollution or nuclear war or by any means. You know, he's got the set time and he will, he will do it. Well, maybe our sin will contribute to it. But uh, as Christians, we, we shouldn't be trying to further that along. But as Amos points out in his readings in particular, uh, you should be careful about what you, what you want. You might just get it. Uh, because what we're looking forward to with joyful excitement, um, well, for many people, it's going to be a horrible time. It's not going to be a good time at all. And in some ways, Christians are going to be caught up in that too, the tribulation that we're in now during this time that goes until the, the end, last day. And, and that's the a reaction that many, particularly Christians, have, a, an over, a joyful excitement of looking forward to that last day. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Uh, and even some unbelievers, because they have no fear of God or judgment, they don't believe it's real and not going to happen, but, uh, but particularly for believers, we know we're looking forward to Jesus to appear as the bridegroom at midnight. And uh, he will bring us into an everlasting wedding banquet celebration. What a wonderful thing to look forward to. Uh, it is. It is. We do. Uh, but we don't have to be afraid, no matter how bad things get between now and then. Uh, but God still has sympathy. He's patient with those. 
giving them every opportunity to come to faith and be saved. And so we should also, with God, have sympathy and be concerned for them. Um, not for ourselves, whatever we might suffer. We don't have to worry about that. But uh, we have complete confidence of our future, but for those who do not believe. And I know some of you do are concerned and have asked, will we care? Will we know what happens? Will we be grieved with, by them when we're in heaven? And um, no, I, we won't be grieved by that. We won't experience any of that pain. That's only for this time. But um, no matter what exactly that other place is that they're going to, uh, anything, anytime, anywhere separated from God is going to be horrible. We are shielded from all of the full consequences of that. Even in our, this sinful time, we're shielded from it now. But at that time, God will remove his shielding from those who do not want it. Uh, moments uh, in this time on this earth can be chaos enough, rioting and lawlessness, uh, but they're still tempered briefly by, by God of how bad they could be. But they're a view of what the, their eternity is that we'll be waiting for. Now remember, God isn't looking forward to sending people to that because God does not look for reasons to judge people. They want nothing to do with God. And so, ultimately, they will get it. Uh, now, that seems to be hard to believe, but yet we can see examples of that in our own day and time. When we live in one of the most prosperous, we're not perfect, we're not perfect, but one of the freest, most prosperous, best, uh, most equal, equal uh, places on the, on the earth. Uh, of any time in history, even this time, and yet some refuse to see the horrors of communism that has been, has been caused and, and of all their forms of government uh, by tyrants, and some people long for those things and, um, and, you know, and, and don't appreciate what we have. And uh, now heaven is not going to be a democratic, capitalist kingdom. It will not be that. It is going to be a theocracy. God is going to be in charge. There's no elections here. The election is now. God has elected you to be one of his people and is taking him, you to be with him. And it will be a sense of communism. We will all work together and support each other and share each other's burdens. And we're not going to worry about our wages. We're not going to worry if we're getting paid more or less than anyone else if, or any of that sort of thing. Uh, we will be focused completely on Jesus, the Lamb on the throne who does the Father's will. But without the divine attributes of Jesus, especially his perfect love, communism on this side, under sinful human people, is a mess. Some of the worst forms of government this world has seen. Um, but I, we're focused on the end times. And how do we prepare ourselves for that? How do you prepare yourselves for the end times that are coming? How do you make sure you have oil in your lamp as you're waiting in this dark time? Sometimes it seems like we are doing these things. We are making decisions. We're preparing ourselves. We're storing up oil, uh, choosing lifestyles. But uh, we only choose godly, righteous th choices in life when the Holy Spirit is already at work living in us and working in us to fill us with those fruit of the Spirit, including joy and self-control. Not just self-control and not just joy, but both joy and self-control. The oil, oil in the Bible is often used as a symbol of the Holy Spirit, uh, particularly anointing priests and kings and prophets with oil was, was, uh, was an anointing of the Holy Spirit. So the story about oil and lamps and, and fire and lamps and candles was also a symbol of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> is about having enough of the Holy Spirit and faith to be prepared through the time of waiting until Jesus appears. 
What do you do to make the Holy Spirit give you faith? Well, you can't make the Holy Spirit do anything, but let him work in you. Stop resisting him like a little baby. A little baby can't get himself dressed. He can't put his shoes on, can't change his diaper, but he can sure resist those things when his mother or grandmother or pa other parents are trying, you know, or somebody else is trying to help him. Uh, he can sure resist. He's, he can't do anything to help himself. But it can, it can hinder those who are, are trying. Um, so uh, let the Holy Spirit work in you. God wants to give you more faith, to trust in Him and to be prepared and to be at peace uh, through the trials and tribulations. You can give God opportunities in your life to fill you with the Holy Spirit by spending time in worship and, uh, and celebrating what God has done and in reading God's Word and in prayer and in doing service for others in the name and in the love of Jesus. These are times when our hearts are open and our minds are open to let God work in us and fill us. Now in a human sense, these seem like things that we do, but the more that the Holy Spirit is at work filling us and helping us to know and do God's will. Now there are people who do these same things right alongside of us, uh, and, uh, who do them you know, without the Holy Spirit, for whatever reason that is. You know, maybe they feel obligated, you know, that the world is a better place. They just like to help people. They, they like to feel good about helping other people. Or maybe some of them even think that they're earning God's love and blessings and forgiveness. These people are not opening their hearts and minds to, you know, um, and, God, and God knows who they are. For them, all these things uh, may seem, you know, at least on a surface level to be joy, but it's a, it's a drudgery. And we've all been in, at that place at time when, when things that we think we want to do are drudgery because we're not doing them in the right, in the spirit of God, in the love of God. They do these things, you know, uh, they do not receive the Holy Spirit when they do these things. Uh, but it is available to them at these times, when, the, when we are shoulder to shoulder, side by side, you know, do, and we hope that they come to faith and experience the joy of faith. Because the last day is coming. Judgment day, resurrection day, just as surely as Jesus is risen, he will come again in glory. That's what we confess in our creed. Uh, he will come again in glory. And while the judgment part is bittersweet, knowing that many will be left out. Uh, once we are inside the kingdom at the wedding feast that never ends, we will be overwhelmed by the awesome glory of God and all the wonderful things he has prepared for us there. Uh, Amos talks about the, oh, oh, no, that was at my funeral in Isaiah. Rich marrow and fine, precious wine, uh, Isaiah 25. So keep your hearts and minds open in worship and prayer and devotions and thanksgivings and praise to the Lord and let the Lord fill you with the oil of the Holy Spirit to keep your lamps burning until he returns. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed, including that he will return, uh, and then pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. I will uh, believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor, his countenance, and give you peace. Amen.